So from the Topology Fundamentals 2 video, I had a comment. Someone was asking, you know, where do I place in poles and e poles and how do I start to figure all this stuff out? So we're just going to kind of play around just analyzing this drone here and uh, maybe doing a little bit of modeling in Blender. But when you're looking at these things and you're thinking about, you know, creating a subdivision model, you're really thinking about the big overall shapes and forms first and just drawing out kind of like the low poly version of this thing. You're trying to figure out where your edges are and thinking about where vertices might be placed as well. But not just that, you're thinking about the overall density of this mesh. Like what's your smallest little sections, your little intersections, your littlest details here, right? You're going to have to support those with geometry at some point, more than likely. And um, that's what's going to make that happen, right? So we can start to kind of identify these very simplistic low poly meshes, if you would. Start to think about, you know, going to the corners of the bevels because we know we need three verts to round out a bevel, right? And so we're not worried about panel lines necessarily right away. If you think it'd be easier to break an object first and then create the other object later on, you possibly could do that. Um, but you are thinking about these little bevels here and things like that. These dictate your overall resolution potentially, unless you can find a way to localize the density of the mesh, you, you'll have to plan for this becoming a thing at some point. In our case, it would actually run through here more than likely. And so if we're gonna block this thing out, we're looking at very simplistic shapes right now, nothing too crazy. Now, whether you're gonna use bevels or creases or um, add additional loop cuts or whatever you're gonna end up doing is gonna be entirely up to you to decide, but usually you go for that big overall shape first and some some bigger bevels you might want to model in, right? But keep them simple. That's the main idea. And so where do the in poles and the e poles come from? And how do you plan on using them and where to add them and all the other fun stuff? You don't really know where they're going to show up necessarily right off the bat. Like it's not something that you just maybe always plan on doing, but you'll start to recognize where they go as you continue the process of uh, modeling, right? So when we see things like this in this area, this is going to end up creating an edge here, an edge here, an edge here, an edge here. Um, and so it's going to be like that. But if we start adding holding edges into this area, perhaps, and we have the additional edges going down like this to hold this corner, right? This is where you end up finding out whether you need to add like a reduction where you go to a single quad like this. It's kind of hard to see because it's so low resolution, but we're looking at uh, something like this, right? And so we could do a reduction, but then it means we need to add another edge out like this possibly, right? So that's going to create a pull if you do that. It's not that I plan on using it. It's just something that you get used to doing. Like you, you will end up creating those kinds of things. Now, do we necessarily need to do it that way? No. I mean, we don't need to create a reduction necessarily. If we're doing high polys and just baking them, I mean, if you want to just run it out, you possibly could. The problem with this, a lot of times that you run into is whenever you have a curve, I don't, this isn't really too curvy, but it's, it's a little bit. Um, a lot of times when you have a curve, you can't run things like this a lot of times uh, because what ends up happening is now you've increased the resolution in this area. Now you're going to try to increase the rest of the resolution on the rest of the curve. Now you end up in this little area where you're just doing lots and lots more geometry. So while you could try doing reductions, you know, you, you end up with more geometry in this direction. But if we were to uh, space things a little bit more appropriately, we can still maybe maintain that curve and do something like this, right? So we can just space it out more, but just by balancing things. Balancing is a huge part of subdivision, and it's something you got to get used to doing. And eventually, as you do more models and you start to recognize like these big overall shapes, it, it suddenly becomes a lot easier to deal with. Like for example, here we have a cutout here, okay, and this. You know, we could probably do on the low poly, even if we wanted to potentially the more block out type mesh detail block out, if you would. Um, but that doesn't always happen like that. And the reason why is because like when you mix something else into it, like a curve, you can see, oh, yep, we got a curve here and we also have uh, a cutout, right? So what kind of density do you need here to support this tiny little corner is going to be something like this right? Potentially. And 
that's really dense, extremely dense. So you're looking at your whole section here having to be that dense as well, right? And so you could try doing a big bevel like this and making lots of segments and then, but that's going to give you more work to do a lot of times. You don't want to always do that. So instead, what you'd probably end up doing is modeling the overall form, not necessarily the details yet, but the overall form as simple as possible, right? And then you'll end up with a proper topology here for that base shape. And this is where you have a decision to make. Either you continue to work on this base shape, but we're not, we won't cut that out either. Actually, we would go through it. Uh, we won't even focus on that just yet. You'd worry about this base shape first, and then that's later on, you start thinking about, do you need to cut this kind of stuff in here, right? Like that's a possibility that could very easily happen to you when doing something like this, right? And we know that when we have a, um, a triangle, it creates an impulse, right? So it's going to be something like this when it, when it subdivides. All right, just keep that in mind. You can use triangles and simple ingons. They work out fine, but triangles create in poles. And then, of course, a simple ingon will create an e-pole. Okay? So as long as it's doing what you expect it to do, in our case it would, uh, we could utilize that pole, potentially, right? That's not to say you wouldn't shove it up further. Like, you can shift these around. You add another edge loop here. You can push it up even higher, right? So that's something else you can do. You can shift the poles around if you're careful with it. That's just one technique of doing that. All right, but what you would more than likely do on a shape like this is you would make it nice, perfect little squares as much as possible. You'd subdivide it one time, and then you would end up with your pole, right? You would end up having all of these subdivided as well, all over the place, and become nice and rounded everywhere. But we have more geo now, right? Maybe we can do another loop cut through here or something. We, we could just delete this face, perhaps. Maybe we got to shift it around a little bit or something, you know? But we could probably just delete that at some point and, and get this all going just right in this area. All right. So it's really hard to get used to that idea of, like, you have to kind of be a step ahead. You have to think about what you're doing next with your mesh. It's not always just that simple. That kind of a shape. Um, a lot of times it's really easy to practice on planes with this kind of stuff. So you can just say like, you're going to create um, this kind of a corner real quick that we just had basically. All right. We subdivide it one time. We get something like this. So control two to subdivide it. And then we do keep corners and we end up with something like this. Let's get rid of that grid floor real quick. And uh, back face colon and we'll turn cavity on. Why not? All right. Shade is smooth. So, we're already seeing the kind of the pattern here now. Like we can definitely, let me turn wireframes on. I'll add it to a shortcut. All right. Turn optimal display off on your subdivision. This is what we're looking at. So level one, control one, two, three, four, right? Um, level zero, that's where we start. Level one, maybe we want this, who knows? Maybe we want to go to a level two. But if you can see how it works out, right? Now we can start worrying about uh, we'll just convert them all to a mesh real quick. Oop, convert to a mesh. All right. So this would work topology-wise there, but we had that cut out at some point. Uh, maybe we just blast it away like this. When we subdivide it next time, we'll get rounded corners. So it's not high enough resolution potentially. Uh, so maybe we don't do that just yet. Uh, maybe we can do that, though. Maybe we can um, extrude this in, and we'll delete these back faces here, these ones. And... So like maybe we do a subdivision, but turn subdivision on an edit mode and turn on the end result. You can use shift E, you can use creases potentially to try to hold shapes like this a little bit, right? And this is a great way of just creating things. You know, a lot of people are getting kind of uh, hyped up over the idea of using um, things like plasticity, CAD modeling software. A lot of CAD artists like actually want subdivision in their CAD software too. So it's kind of interesting when you see that play out. But you can see we can up res and down res this now, and it holds that corner. So if we ever want to do some like edits like that until we, you know, take it up another level of subdivision or two and apply it, um, we could, you know, we could shade this smooth. You can see that one of the downsides of using creases is that the shading still looks pretty bad until you take it up to a really high resolution. So normally when you're doing this, a lot of times what's going to happen is like we could leave those in there potentially. 
but you're probably going to go back at some point and bevel things anyways, right? So you might bevel them, change the profile to one, and maybe set outer emitter to arc, um, outer emitter, uh, yeah, to arc if needed in certain areas. So, and then eventually you get rid of your creases. You shift the, bring them all back. Don't worry about it. And, um, or you can hit in, bring out the side panel, and you can just set creases like that as well, right? Where you set the number here. Get rid of it to zero. And so it's still not going to look, you know, 100% maybe, but the next subdivision, it should look really good. All right, so the holding edges are kind of the finalized result, I would say, for your model. Creases are useful in the process, but this is how you can just go about doing that stuff. And it would work even in the, in the corner where the curve was now, right? Like, if we just inset, hit B, hold control, you can see, like, we could just push that in, add some loop cuts in here maybe, and then once again, run around, bevel, right? So you have to understand when you're going to need high-density mesh, right? You're going to, more than likely, if you're trying to hold a lot of detail, like really small detail, you're going to need higher-density mesh more than likely. Now, there are, you know, ways of localizing density, but on curves like this, it's very hard to do, right? On flat surfaces, it's much easier to do. But that's just something you'll have to get used to working with. And um, it's just something worth uh, looking more into, perhaps, like localizing detail. And anyways, so, but that's the process here. And you can see, you know, simple, more detailed, more detailed. And, you know, if you're trying to do any kind of game art, you don't always need subdivision. I want to point that out. But also, um, when you're doing, like, environments and stuff, like, you start with block out, then you do, like, a detailed kind of a rough pass and then you might do your finalized art pass it's the same process it's an iterative process right like you start simple work it make it a little bit more complicated a lot of times you'll have better results now do take your time of course go through and just trace over images like this a little bit time to time you don't have to do too many like hard studies on shapes and forms but it's nice to recognize um, how you might plan on going about doing something first right it's always nice to just trace out some edges and in create it, you just hold the V key. Um, and you can start to imagine what you're going to have to do as your subdivision modeling. And anytime you look at any real world object from this point on, and you're thinking about like, how would I create that in a 3D software? You can start to identify things a lot quicker, um, even on real world things. Like you can, um, you, you get a better understanding of topology just by looking at it that way. All right. Now, all in all, uh, it takes practice. Like you're going to have to go through this several dozen times at least to even start feeling like you're getting a hang probably of doing it, but it's just, it's really simple. The in poles kind of show up um, in corners where it makes sense and the e poles where uh, mesh is trying to converge into multiple areas, but you don't really think about it too hard usually. Uh, just know that there's different ways of holding corners, right? Like there's, there's different ways of doing that. And this is something I mentioned in, like, I think one video, but there's really, you know, there's two types of corners. There's ones like this, right? And then there's going to be other ones where they're more like this, where they go in at a 45 degree angle and they go like this. Okay. And so the difference here isn't really all that much. All you've done is shift the pole around. So you can think of it like, um, this is for a rounded corner, more rounded corner. And the other one's for more of a uh, sharp corner. So you see, as I add all this back in here, if we subdivide that, it's nice and rounded. We subdivide this, it's a little bit more squared. Okay, so that's the difference. The poles just shifted. You do use both of those depending on the uh, situation. And that's kind of the takeaway here for the corners anyways. Uh, other than that, concave sections, obviously, you're going to look at something like this, which looks very familiar. We have the three edges going in and out like that, right? And it goes to there. So it's very similar to this one in some respect, but it, they kind of spread apart instead of coming back together. Anyways. So, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed checking out uh, these little tips, and that'll be it for it, for this one anyways, right? Check out the next one. Take care.